All right, everybody, today we're checking out the Diana XR200, which is Diana Airgun's first PCP rifle. I learned about this maybe two years ago, and I've been super excited about it. I thought it was a pretty big deal. I thought it would be cool to not only explore this 22, but also do a video on the 177 or 30 caliber. But unfortunately, I've reached out to Diana Airgun's USA distributor quite a few times, and they won't return my email, so... I'm looking into starting a Patreon account so that in a situation where we can't get a hold of the manufacturer to help promote a popular new gun, I could just go ahead and buy it. And we'll put it on Patreon. And I think that would be a great place so we could just cover everything. But as of now, at least we do have Pyramid Air that helps out with this channel. So thanks to Pyramid Air, we're going to get to see the 22 caliber. For more information on the Diana XR200 PCP air rifle, shoot on over to PyramidAir.com. Once again, they're bringing you this video, so you have them to thank. There will be a link in the description. It used to be that I had affiliate links and that I would make 5% when you use the link in the description. The reason I don't say that anymore is because that's no longer true. The place that runs the affiliate links is called CJ.com, and they do over $14 billion a year in revenue. However, every time you click on one of their links, it's now labeled as something bad, let's just say. So I just stopped putting them on there. All right, let's get on with this Diana XR200 PCP air rifle. It's basically engineered for accuracy and adjustability. It's going to deliver 21 foot-pounds in 177, 33 foot-pounds in 22, and 44 foot-pounds in 25, 59 foot-pounds in 30. It's truly ambidextrous. It's got a reversible side lever, a reversible safety lever, and the pressure gauge actually sticks out to the side so you can see it, and you can switch that from right to left. One of the cool things about the Diana XR200, besides having an Alturos regulator, which are very nice, it just has a fill pressure of 200 bar. So it's easy to fill with a hand pump, quick to fill with a compressor or tank. And the reason it's so accurate is, as I said, due to that Alturos regulator, but mainly it's a fully shrouded Lothar Walther barrel. So it's got a match Lothar Walther barrel, which has a match style barrel plan for added stability. We got an 11 millimeter dove's tail, optics rail, a Picatinny rail under the forearm so you can attach your bipod. This synthetic version right here looks like it's OD green. And both sides of the grip and forearm have textured rubber inserts. So it's going to give you a good hold in all conditions. So it has a fully shrouded barrel, so it's probably going to be quiet. In the smaller calibers, the stock is ambidextrous. Air tube capacity is 280 cc's. It's got adjustable power level screw. So adjustable power, that means you can tune it. The magazine capacity 177 is going to hold 14. 12 and 22 caliber, 10 and 25 caliber, and the magazine is going to hold 8 and 30 caliber. It's got a two stage adjustable trigger. The barrel length is going to be 22 inches in the smaller calibers, about 24 inches in the 30 caliber. Overall length of 43 inches. It weighs 6.6 .6 pounds in the synthetic. It includes one magazine, one twin shot tray, which is like a single shot tray, and a rifle case. Nice. And of course, it's made in Germany. Another reason it's so accurate. And, of course, you guys, if you don't know, Diana Airguns has been making airguns for probably close to 100 years. So, they definitely know what they're doing. I did go ahead and clean the XR200 before I shot it, but it was actually completely clean already. Sometimes, on the first production run of certain guns, they know they're going to sell out, so they don't bother putting the preservative gunk in the barrel. You definitely want to run a patch through there with a crown saver and ballast stall if you happen to get one of these. The manuals that you get are super thorough. They have every single thing with nice full color pictures, but I did have to consult my manual. I am going to explain to you how to adjust the velocity. So it came tuned kind of like the Avenger X and the Avenger for I don't know what. Definitely not the ammo that I shoot. So we had the same situation where it's shooting the 25.39 grain too slow and the 18.1 grain too fast. The only problem was that I was not able to turn this rifle down a lot so I actually turned it down all the way and it ended up tuning the 18.1 grain pellets at 890 feet per second which is what we're going for. I did try briefly to turn it up and it appeared to not want to go up in power so basically this gun shoots the 18 grains. Real quick I'm going to show you how to adjust the power on the XR200. On the left side of the rifle you're going to see a little flathead screw that says plus and minus on it. That actually has nothing to do with your adjustment it's just a cover. So you can either remove that entirely or slip the smallest Allen key that you have through the center hole. You would want to at least loosen it a little bit, but
But then on the right side of the rifle, directly opposite that, is another flathead screw. So with that teeny little Allen key, you'll be able to put it into a teeny little bolt, I guess it is. And you're going to turn that clockwise for less power and counterclockwise for more power. Just like it says on the side of the gun. So if you're turning it down, you'll get to a point where you can't turn the adjustment screw anymore until you start to back out the flathead screw that's opposite that on the right side. So to turn mine down to where I got it, I had to back that thing almost all the way out. So I may have been able to get it a little lower, but I left like one or two threads in there. And then what you're able to do is when your velocity screw is adjusted where you want it, then you'll tighten up the flathead screw on the right against that, and then everything's stuck and it's not going anywhere. You can tighten up your cover as well. So that's how you hold it in place once you achieve your desired velocity. So stretching it out a little farther to 38 yards, I found that the FX 18.0 grains versus the JSB 18.13 grain for the third time in a row, the JSBs did better. So just to summarize, I tuned this gun down 890 feet per second, which is the preferred velocity for most pellets, hopefully achieving the best accuracy. And it turns out that the 18.13 grain JSBs are the most accurate pellet. 38 yards away, we'll call it 35. This was just me getting sighted in. We're starting off here with the JSB 18.13 grain at 38 yards. Oh. Falaya. All right, let's try a different pellet. So those are the 18.13 grain. Let's go for some FX. Looking good. So let me just click over. We have to come down a little bit. There it is. So right here I initially thought that the FX eighteen point one zeros weren't shooting well. Wow, this is like walking all over the place. But what was really happening was that I was falling off the regulator. So it looks like you get about twenty shots before your velocity starts to drop and therefore your accuracy. As long as you're on that regulator though, the XR200 shoots awesome. That trigger is so, so smooth. We'll call these my official groups, but this is basically my average 38 yard group when I'm shooting my best. I'm loving that. So just like the last two guns, this gun likes the 18.13 grain JSB better than the FX. Darn it. Now, this thing's pretty awesome. Yep. All right, so we're just about to fall off the regulator. Now, if I were to keep shooting, I'll just show you what's going to happen. 879. See, we're about to drop off. I think we definitely found our pellet though. Pretty dang accurate and definitely a smooth, fun shooter. It would probably be more noticeable at longer distance, but at 38 yards, even at 850 feet per second, we're still hitting the bullseye. Just to make sure, I did try the FX 18.10 grains again. And sure enough, damn it, they put a couple outside the group, and then I switched back to the JSB 18.13s, and boom, right through the same ragged hole. That's a proper group right there. This gun sort of grew on me while I was filming this review. And by the time I shot my 50 yard groups, which you'll see in a second, I was totally in love with it. Real quick, here's a look at the trigger and a few other things. 2.9 ounces of awesome. Seriously, the trigger is one of the things that makes this gun. Oh man. Just awesome trigger. All right, as far as single shot loading, I'm not sure what's going on with that double tray, but 
This is extremely easy to just reach your finger in there. That's literally over an inch wide. So I've just been single shot loading this whole video. Just put it right in the end of the barrel and close that sucker. Okay, one thing I want to address is I said I couldn't turn it up anymore. So this is down all the way. Let's say that I came over to the left side and made this be out like a quarter inch. And my little adjustment that's in there, I adjusted it all the way out. It's uh, very likely that I could increase the power. So I may try that at the end of this video. I'll tell you why I love shooting these 18 grains over the 25.4 grains. It's because you get almost twice as many, okay? 500 pieces versus 300. 14 grain is basically what a crossroom premier is. So that's already heavy. All right, we got the XR200 set up at a very special. 50 yards away, perfect. All right, we got a full tank, although the original Diana website said that you could fill this to 250 bar. Do you want to crack the scoop right here? Boy, it is pretty hard to see. Not a lot of light coming through this. Oh, I slipped on the trigger, but that's a nice, that would have been like a perfect group because that one definitely would have been inside. I pulled the trigger when it was outside. So let's just click over a teeny bit. Boy, that's an excellent 50 yard group, you guys. And that's yeah, that's good enough for me. That's a good as 50 yard group of just about any gun, you guys. Look at that, you guys. Yep, and it's also flyer free. That's the important thing. They all group. So I'm loving it. So that's just the first two groups I shot at 50 yards. I think this gun got a little more accurate as I kept shooting it. Get that regulator broken in, get that barrel leaded up a little bit, and you're gonna be in business. The 30 caliber, it says, does come with a one half UNF threaded barrel. Just hit up Donny FL for an adapter if you wanna put an LDC on the 177, 22, or 25. I was definitely not disappointed in Diana Airgun's first PCP. I would describe it as lightweight, obviously accurate and reliable with that Lothar Walter barrel, and a pleasure to shoot. Very smooth shooter, really no recoil or vibration, just that clean, crisp trigger pull. Definitely a fun gun to shoot. Here's a sound test. My 22 was a little bit loud. All right, everybody, that's it for me on this one. Till next week. Happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.